What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $600 second stimulus check update and your $2,000 third stimulus check update. President Joe Biden is now officially the president and in the White House right now as we speak. He just signed multiple executive orders. We're going to go over that and we're going to go over the new changing of the guard in the Senate and the next stimulus package and the next stimulus check that is being worked on in the Senate and by the Biden administration. I'm going to give you guys all the latest details of it in this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below and give this video a like for us. It really helps out our channel. Also, I want to note that there will be 11 p.m. Eastern time videos over the next several days as there's just going to be so much breaking news coming in regarding stimulus and the new administration and the new Senate, which controls the stimulus and yeah, everything in there. So new videos will be every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 8 p.m., and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You won't get a notification for the 11 p.m. one, so you just got to kind of remember those times and tune in. President Joe Biden was now sworn in today and just signed several executive orders as he plans to sign upwards of 50 plus executive orders over the next 10 days, some of which will directly affect you, some of which will not, but will affect the economy and America going forward. President Joe Biden, I got to get used to saying that, says, quote, I thought there's no time to wait. Get to work immediately. He also commented on the letter that is historically passed on from president to president, in this case, President Donald Trump, leaving a letter in the Resolute Desk for the new president, which is now President Biden. And here's what Joe Biden had to say about the letter. Biden called the letter from Mr. Trump that he left for him, quote, very generous, but said he wouldn't divulge the contents because they're private. There's speculation going around that the letter from Donald Trump was a simple one-line letter that said, Joe, you know I won. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I seen this on Facebook today, I absolutely fell on the floor laughing. You can't help but, uh, but laugh at this. Obviously, this isn't the real letter, but uh, I, I was literally rolling on the floor laughing when I seen this. Here is a breakdown on the first several executive orders that have already been signed by President Biden. Boy, I really have to get used to saying that after saying President Donald Trump tens of thousands of times, is number one, a 100-day mask challenge where he will require masks for federal employees and people on federal property, federal government property. This includes a federal mask mandate and a social distance mandate on any federal property, including federal land and to create a new position for the COVID-19 response coordinator. This is basically bringing back an Obama-era position called the Directorate for Global Health Security and Biodefense, which was organized with additional staff within the National Security Council after the 2014 Ebola epidemic. This office was dispersed into other roles during the Trump administration, before the COVID-19 pandemic, and President Trump took a lot of criticism for basically getting rid of the position of the director of pandemics right before a pandemic had actually hit. But Biden and his campaign advisors argued the move decreased the preparedness of the federal government for the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Biden will formally implement a response coordinator who will report to the president on the vaccine, testing, and personal protective equipment production, supply, and distribution. Biden is also signing an executive order to rejoin the WHO, the World Health Organization, which reverses the removal of the United States from that from President Donald Trump. Dr. Fauci will lead the U.S. and be the U.S.'s lead delegate in the World Health Organization. Dr. Fauci also now says that serving in the Trump administration was, quote, somewhat awkward. It is very different with Biden and Trump on at least the mask 
and the pandemic. I mean, we look at Biden now in his first day puts a federal mask mandate for federal employees, federal lands, federal building where it's you have to wear a mask. In contrast to President Donald Trump, who only wore a mask basically a few times ever, and before he had COVID and after he had COVID, still really never wore a mask. Only a few times did he ever wear a mask, but he said he wasn't against them, at least towards the end of his presidency when he was up for re-election, but really 99% of the time never really wore one. So definitely big differences there in presidential kind of uh, paths that they're going down. Also, Biden passed a, an executive order to extend the eviction and the foreclosure moratoriums. He will call on the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, to re-implement and extend the already defunct moratorium until at least March 31st. President Biden will also call on the Departments of Agriculture, Housing, and Urban Development and Veteran Affairs to extend the foreclosure moratoriums for their federally backed mortgages, saying, quote, these emergency measures are important. There are more than 11 million mortgages guaranteed by the VA, the Department of Agriculture, and HUD that would be extended. There also is, a, I believe, an executive order on the pause of student loan payments all the way till September 30th. And as you can see here, Biden advisors continue to assert Biden still supports his campaign pledge to cancel $10,000 of student loan, but it will take time as it has to go through Congress. Also, now Chuck Schumer, who is now the Senate Majority Leader, says that he doesn't need Congress to do this, and he could do this through a presidential executive order up to $50,000. It'll be interesting to see if Biden wants to pass this through Congress or includes this in a stimulus package instead of through an executive order. By the way, we're still getting details on all these executive orders. Only some have been released at the time of this filming. I will have more for you guys on this in the next 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. in the next video tonight at 11 p.m. It'll also be interesting to see if he does the $200 per month Social Security SSI uh, Social Security, SSDI, railroad benefits increase in the next package, which is not currently in there yet, or if he does it through an executive order or a standalone bill. The most common thing that I've been hearing is that it will probably be in a standalone bill because it presents a much higher opportunity to get Republican support on it. Because if it's just a bill for increasing Social Security by $200 per month, Number one is that really doesn't cost that much when you compare that to, say, $10,000 in student loan forgiveness versus $200 per month. It's a tiny, tiny bit compared to the student loan forgiveness. Now, I personally think they're going to pass both, but I think that the uh, Social Security increase of $200 per month is, is a lot like more stomachable than, say, $10,000 that he could do through an executive order. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with both of those. I will be keeping you guys updated on that as well as the $1,400 to $2,000 stimulus checks that are in the third stimulus package. And now, today, the Democrats have sworn in three additional senators to gain the majority seat in the Senate and have basically now taken control of the Senate now with a 50-50 split, but the tiebreaker vote goes to Vice President now Kamala Harris, which is a big deal because Mitch McConnell is no longer Senate Majority Leader. He will now be Senate Minority Leader. So with Chuck Schumer, now the Senate Majority Leader, and under the Constitution, the Vice President is the considered the President of the Senate that has now turned to both Democrats. It's obviously Chuck Schumer and Kamala Harris are both Democrats, as opposed to just yesterday, it was Vice President Mike Pence, a Republican, and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Here were the opening statements today from the new President of the Senate, who's Vice President now, Kamala Harris, and Senate Majority Leader now, Chuck Schumer. The chair lays before the Senate two certificates of election for the state of Georgia, and a certificate of appointment to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of former Senator Kamala D. Harris of California. <laughs> yeah. 
joke. That was very weird. Okay. <laughs> As you've seen there, Vice President Kamala Harris said that was really weird because she's now president of the Senate and is announcing her own resignation from the Senate because you have to resign from the House or the Senate to become vice president. You can't be vice president or president and also in the Senate at the same time. So she had to resign from the Senate. And now that she's the vice president and president of the Senate, she had to announce her own resignation. And the new senator that came in her place, along with the other two Democratic Georgia senators that just won their Georgia Senate runoff elections. The certificates the chair is advised are in the form suggested by the Senate. If there be no objection, the reading of the certificates will be waived and they will be printed in full in the record. If the senators elect and senator designate will now present themselves at the desk, the chair will administer the oath of office. Mr. Ossoff. Mr. Padilla, Mr. Warnock. Please raise your right hand. Okay. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you, God. I do. Congratulations. And now who will become Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat from New York, who is taking the place of previous Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and will be basically head of the Senate in charge of uh, stimulus checks and stimulus packages going forward. President and Madam Vice President. Majority Leader. Uh, just to let the members know the order of business, we will first uh, install Senator Leahy as President Pro Tem. We will then have some uh, other sort of just mechanical business. I will then give my maiden speech as Majority Leader of the United States Senate. And then we'll hear. <laughs> and then we'll hear from Senator McConnell there may be a vote this evening. So yeah, lots of breaking news yet to come. Make sure you're subscribed down below and you click the bell icon. It's completely free to do so to all notifications. So you get notifications for the 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern time videos. You won't get a notification for the 11 p.m. videos that are Eastern time. Of course, you have to adjust if you're not Eastern time. Just tune in at 11 p.m. or whatever your time zone is for the 11 p.m. video. I will have breaking news coming to you guys in all of these videos as there's just gonna be a plethora of news of everything now changing hands, the next stimulus checks, stimulus packages, executive orders, the mortgage and rental assistance coming in, student loan forgiveness, raising of social security, all those things. Today starts the day of breaking news because basically everything old is old and now the new administration that can pass all these things is in power today. I will keep you updated. You can click this top video to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is on our second channel, The Daily Dirt, where we just covered the inauguration speech of Joe Biden and yesterday the farewell speech of President Trump. Click one of those to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.